And welcome to another daily devotion on the Acts of the Apostles through the Holy Spirit, commonly just referred to as the Book of Acts, or the Acts of the Apostles. Um, today we're actually at Acts chapter 10, and this is a turning point in the mission and ministry of the church. And I, for one, am very thankful that this turning point came because it was the point at which the doors were opened to the Gentile church, to the Gentiles to become members of the church, to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. And I am very thankful that those doors were opened and that we have the privilege to go in. This um, chapter 10 will take several days to get through. We're just going to take it in small bites. But before we begin, let's pray. Father, thank you that in your grace, you even reached down and communicated your love and your salvation to me, to those of us who are outside the chosen nation of Israel, the blood descendants of Abraham. Thank you that you flung wide open the doors of your kingdom to all who would accept Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. Lord, today help us to be inspired anew and afresh by your grace and help us to hold the doors open for others as well. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we come to this at Acts 10, 1, we'll just be reading the first eight verses today. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius a centurion of what was known as the Italian cohort, a devout man who feared God with all his household, gave alms generously to the people, and prayed continually to God. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius. And he stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. And now, send men to Joppa and bring one Simon who is called Peter. He is lodging with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had departed, he called two of his servants and a devout soldier from among those who attended him. And having related everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. So we, we start this, and I, I said I would talk about Simon the Tanner, but I might save that for uh, the next day. I don't know, or the next session. We'll, we'll see. The Cornelius is who we want to focus on here. He's a centurion. That means he's a commander of a hundred of what was known as the Italian court, cohort. That would be those who were from Rome. He was a devout man who feared God with all his household. So he was a God-fearer, which means he was interested in the Jewish religion, but he had not become a proselyte. He had not been circumcised and brought in to the uh, faith tradition of the Jews. But he really had a lot of respect for them, and he uh, believed in their God. That's what that means. And so he feared God, um, and he had evidently taught his household to do so. He gave alms generously. That means he was giving to the poor and needy around him, so he had a heart of compassion and generosity. He prayed continually to God. He knew that he needed God's help, God's guidance, God's direction, and so he prayed continually. And so one day, about the ninth hour or three o'clock in the afternoon, he saw clearly a vision, an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius, <laughs> well, that'll get your attention. You know, someone just shows up in your inner quarters all of a sudden and they know your name and they, they call you by it. He stared at him in terror and he said, what is it, Lord? Uh, he recognizes that this is a being greater than himself, one who deserves respect. And he, the angel, said to him, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. And now, 
send men to Joppa and bring one Simon who is called Peter. And so the answer to Cornelius's prayer is for him to send messengers to give, they, they gave him something to do, sending messengers to Simon Peter, who was staying with Simon the Tanner. Now, I, I will touch just a little bit on Simon the Tanner. And if you'll excuse me, I need to blow my nose. I'm so sorry. But Simon the Tanner made his living dealing with dead flesh, dead animals, dead skins. He was near the sea because he probably used salt water to cure the hides. This would have been an unclean profession. It would have been something that would have been looked down on and ostracized by most God-fearing Jews um, who were very observant. And yet this is the home in which Simon Peter is lodging. So you can see that the grace of God, the power of God on what is clean and what is unclean has already begun to take root in Peter. Nothing uh, that is outside of you can make you unclean. It's only that which comes out of you that makes you unclean. And so you can see that God's already been working on Simon Peter and modified his views of cleanness and things of that nature through the ministry of Jesus and the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so he's staying with Simon the Tanner. And so Cornelius is supposed to send messengers to Simon the Tanner's house in order to get Simon Peter to come and visit him. So an angel appears and tells you you're supposed to send for someone in another town in another place. That's the answer to your prayer. What do you do? Do you, in humble obedience, send the servants? Or do you say, no, that's, that seems stupid. Why would I do that? Cornelius truly was a man who feared God. He also was a man who understood authority, who understood sending people to do a job. And so he sent to have Peter brought to him. This is the beginning of the ministry to the, the Gentiles. So Cornelius would be a Gentile. His household would be Gentile. They were God-fearers, but they were not converts to Judaism. They had not become proselytes. The door is now opened. And I just think it's an amazing thing. The grace of God, that God would have this man prepared, ready to receive the good news of Jesus Christ, he would be able to call Peter, and through this interchange, the doors to the Gentile world were thrown open. We're not there yet, but this is the beginning. Father God, today, help us to realize that you love all people in all places at all times. And help us to respond in humble obedience to you whenever and wherever you speak to us and however you call us by name. Lord, help us to respond in humble obedience even as Cornelius did. And then, Lord, because of that, help us to reach this, our world, to the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Father, we need your Spirit to do this. So fill us and empower us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you as you walk in the power of the Holy Spirit today.